Good day guys. Looking for a little content I guess and I found some. Um, one of my guys was out a week and a half ago and replaced this uh, part on a 1270 uh, G or E. I don't remember. E I think. Anyways I wasn't there but I sent him out there to fix this and he brought me back this old piece of what it is is a linear actuator and it controls the steps on the harvester and of course without the steps up the safety interlock as you would call it in the machine would not let the machine run so I'm guessing there's something that came apart in there that ain't supposed to be like that there's actually an Acme thread inside threaded rod and uh, I'm going to tear it apart right now and I'm going to let you know what's in there. I'll come back to you in just a minute. I'm going to see what what got smoked in there just because I want to see. I hate these things. I honestly do. John Deere uses them a lot on their equipment and yeah, that's just my opinion. I just, I'd rather see a hydraulic cylinder there that you repack it, go back to work. Um, but whatever. These are pricey little buggers too. So at any rate, I'll bring you right back shortly. We'll see what's wrong inside. screws. already lost my nuts. Well, it's got a date of 224 2014 manufactured. Thomas Polo Linear AB Sweden. Should be a pretty good part, but like I said, I've seen these things. They fill up with freaking water, they go tight, they, they're not impervious to like a lot of things out in the woods. They just get full of crap, and there's nylon gears in here instead of metal. And, yeah, I'm just going on a tangent, but whatever, it's my tangent. Um, and we'll find out shortly. It shouldn't take much to see this. Looks to me like we had a little bit of shearing action going on here. The thread is still intact. Looks to me like the key going down into the pilot bushing down in here is what gave up the ghost. This is a clutch. So when it hits the end of its stroke, it sits there and that's basically what that is. It keeps it from stripping everything out, or it's supposed to keep it from doing this. There's also sensors in this machine that should stop the steps once it's open and tell it to stop sending juice to the, to the motor. And then when it goes up, it'll reverse the voltage and go the other way and bring it back up in reverse. 
So, it looks to me like we just need a key. And that's about it. Maybe I can repurpose this into some artwork. Okay, I gotta get a big wrench and go after the bottom end also. And a Torx. This time I am gonna shut you off for a little while. Okay folks, back to the drawing board. I digress. I back up. This is the piece within this spring thingamajig here and you can see the roll pin and the roll pin is sheared. The rest of it is in here. This spring, all it did was keep that roll pin centered in there and then it took up the thrust from here to here. There's small little thrust washers down inside of here. You know the kind of, maybe I can show you here. One hand Luke. So in here, come on. You might be able to see it, probably not. There it is. There's a, there's a set of thrust washers in there. So when this thing is actuating, it's got some some uh, something to carry the load um, and I was wrong that is not the clutch I got the bottom half open you can see the gear this gear goes up in here like so the motor drives it spin the jigs right there is the clutch right here That'll hop around in there when she hits the end of the cylinder stroke. But right here, and again, I don't know if you can see it, is the keyway. And so technically, I have my suspicion that this got hit. Something happened to it. Something got jammed in it, whatever the case is. Sheared the pin. And... This is just a woodruff key the way it looks, a real small, maybe a 3 16 well, whatever it is in metric, because it's made over the pond. Um, so if I clean that up, file that hole out, get myself the right pin, put this all back together with the key, I'll have a, I don't know, I'm guessing deer charged them probably seven or $800 for this thing to make the steps go up and down. So... With that being said, it's probably a salvageable part if I want to spend the time doing it. The problem with that is these guys are in the woods. They got to go. Corporate America knows that. There aren't many guys that do this anymore. Just tear it down, fix it because they don't have time. They're out there to make money. They got a half million dollar machine. They got to make payments. So Deer says, okay, we're going to and no offense, they kind of all do it. I'm not picking on deer in particular, but they all, it is, that's the way the world is. You just got to go and buy the freaking part, put it back on, go to work. So the guy, I'm, like I said, I'm guessing, it, the last time I bought one, it was almost $500, and that was two years ago. Uh, you know, they have a tendency to increase by leaps and bounds, not, you know, small increments like the rest of the world. And so I'm guessing that this is probably 600, 600 to 800. That's that's my guess. But there you go. I mean, it's a simple 50 cent roll pin, and probably a 20 cent Woodruff key. Maybe it's a dollar, you know. But it's just kind of the way it rolls. So I'm going to try to fix the son of a gun, and uh, that's my little content. I was looking for content and I got content now. So I'll probably lay here for a couple days until I get at it, but whatever. You know, no harm to fall. But yeah, that's interesting. I just I just can't figure it out. That that wouldn't have sheared that's almost a quarter inch hardened pin in a key. So he either had to have an impact on that on that step, or he had to have an impact on that step. On that whatever connects here. Like I said, I wasn't out in the field, but my guess is that took a hit, something something took a hit and made that thing go snap. 
or something was jammed in it, stick, big branch. You never know out in the woods. So, all right, till next time, guys. Thanks, and we'll, if I ever get it fixed, I'll try to show it to you working. All right, see ya.